Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ming Lee. If you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back. Now, first set of rules. If you're new here, please subscribe. And if you already subscribed, make sure you guys turn on your little bell so you can get all my notifications. I have so much content coming. I'm about to start vlogging. I'm gonna give you guys a life update. So this video is a life update of my life. Okay, okay. be serious, me. Yeah, so today is my father's birthday, which is kind of ironic that I'm doing a life update on his birthday. My father, quick backstory, my father is the reason I even am a hairstylist, the reason why I even got into the beauty industry. Um, doing hair was always my talent. Like I always knew how to do hair because I was raised by my grandmother. So I kind of like had to figure it out or get teased in school. And I'm from, you know, I went to elementary and middle school in Detroit. So it was Girl, figure out how to get your hair combed. I never like grew up with the, it was never a passion of mine. Like I never like, oh my God, I love doing hair. I want to do hair. It was always like a talent. And it was a brief moment that I kind of wanted to do hair only because I thought it was like the coolest thing. Like I remember um, my high school hairstylist, which her name was Star. She used to do hair. She used to do my hair. She, yeah, of course she used to do hair. But she used to do my hair, and she was so fly. Like, she was like the flyers. Every year she got a new black Lexus. She came in with the cutest outfits. Her hair was already done, always done. I was like, dang, I could really do this, right? But it was never like a passion, like, I desired to, like, do it. I really wanted to learn how to do hair, so... Cause I ain't, so I didn't have to keep coming to the hair salon sitting in there all day more so than like, I just love the art of hair. No. Okay. So fast forward high school. I wanted to kind of like learn in high school. I wanted to learn how to do hair. So I didn't have to go to the hair salon. I didn't want to learn how to do hair because it was like my passion. I thought it was kind of cool though. Cause star was the flyest hairstylist in Detroit. Nobody was flyer than star. Um, but it wasn't for like a passion, like, oh, I just fell in love with hair. I just wanted to learn how to do it to save some money and be able to do my own hair. And then when I moved to Atlanta when I was 19, I ended up stopping in the parking lot of Aveda. And when I stopped in the parking lot of Aveda, I ran in and got like a pamphlet. They told me Estee Lauder was doing um, a competition and I could compete and win a full scholarship to Aveda. So I was like, okay, whatever. I ended up competing against all these girls and I won. So you're looking at an Estee Lauder hair scholarship recipient. I won a scholarship. So I attended hair school. And after hair school, I was like, this ain't really my vibe. Like, I don't want to do this. But you know, I, I am a person with like ADHD, like, I'll start something and not complete it in a second. And or I'll get bored with I get bored with shit real, real, real fast. So once I finish, once I had finished hair school, I was like, mm. then I had found then I wanted to work on set, like I wanted to work on movie sets and TV sets and with celebrities. And then I found out that the the makeup artist hires the hairstylist. So I was like, I want to do makeup. So I'm like, I'm not doing hair. I'm going to do makeup. It was only one small problem with that plan is I can't fucking do makeup. I can't even draw. So the plan of me being this world renowned makeup artist has failed big time. I was like, mm, okay, whatever. So I started waitressing. I was, I had became like a bottle girl. And so, like, my dad's like, well, you can't do that forever. And I'm like, why not? Like, I'm making thousands of dollars a week, doing nothing, talking, being cute, serving drinks. Like, this is, like, the life. He like, no, you have to, like, you have to figure out, like, a career. You have to figure out something that's long, that has longevity. He was like, yeah, it's, it's cool now, but you're not going to be cute forever. Who not going to be cute forever? 
he was like, you got to figure it out. Like, why don't you go get your hair license? Because mind y'all, I had graduated from hair school, but I never went and got my cosmetology license. Like, I graduated, and it was like graduation and just vibes, no license. <laughs> I'm sick. So he would give me the money to go take my state board test, and I would go to Baker's. Yeah, I don't know. I'm old. I'm showing my age, but whatever. Baker's is a, is a shoe store that used to be around when I was a PYT. And so I would go to Baker's and give me like two, three pairs of shoes with the $250. I was not going to take that state board. Actually, taking a state board test was like the last thing on my list of things to do. And it was probably 300 things on my list of things to do. So, but then my dad ended up getting into a tragic car accident that, you know, claimed his life in um, November the 17th. That's why I have this red 17 right here. It's like written in blood, red ink. Um, and he got into an accident November the 17th. I actually signed the paperwork in the hospital to take him off of life support because he was a complete vegetable and only viable if the machines was running on December the 17th. And, and I climbed in the bed and sat with him until he flatlined. And so, and I remember getting out the bed saying like, you know, I promise you I'm gonna make you proud. I can't cry because my makeup is too good. My makeup is too good. <laughs> I just got it done. But I remember getting out to bed, just telling him, like, I'm going to make you proud. And that, you know, I'm going to take care of my little brother. Like, I got my little brother forever. And um, if you don't know, like, my parents were, you know, abused drugs. I was adopted. The only, my parents had nine kids. The only child that ever stayed with my parents was my little brother. Um, out of all nine of us, my little brother was the only one who, spent his whole entire life with my dad. And so, like, I remember I was like, you know, I got Cody, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna make you proud. And like, I, I mean, I hope he's proud. I know he's proud. I wish he was here to help me spend up some of this money. I know we will be at Target every day. And he thought the like best car in the world was like a Cadillac. So I know I would have bought him a Cadillac, but so, um, after, after his funeral, I was like, well, let me get his hair shit a try. Like my dad really wanted me to do it. He really believed that I was really good at doing it. Like, let me try. And like, I like, I went to Aveda. So like, if you went to Aveda, you know, they kind of like train you to go work in a commission based salon and they kind of like train you to either focus on hair cutting or hair color, especially when I was in school. And this was like in 07. So in 07, they really, really, really forced down your neck that you can either be a cutter or a colorist and to go work for, you know, a Veda based salon and do commission. I remember I like tried to go work at like maybe, I don't know, 42 different, 41, 42 different salons. They all told me either no, they wasn't hiring or, they would get back to me, and then I auditioned for a lady named Sabrina. Hey, bring, bring. Shout out to Sabrina. Um, and she hired me at the Glam Bar on. And so my first day of working was August 7th, 2010. That's crazy. It took me six months to go from no clients to a fully booked clientele. And after six months, I decided that I was gonna start selling hair. Life forever changed. I said all that to say like, listen to your parents. They know what's best. Like, you know, like I did not want to take my dad's advice. I did not want to do hair. I didn't want to do none of it. And the doors that being a hairstylist has opened up for me the opportunities that I've been presented, the lifestyle that I've been allotted. I'm, I'm like forever grateful and just really thankful that 
I took my dad's advice. So today is his birthday, so I wanted to give like a little bit of a backstory of just who Charles was and how great of a man he was and how he will always and forever be my daddy. I'm a daddy's girl, so he taught me a lot of lessons, but a few lessons that like stick out and is like a part of like my daily mantra of the one dating lesson that he taught me was that I like stand on like stand on that shit like it's gospel um is like who like you and what he meant by that is like don't be chasing no no niggas around like don't be chasing no boys let me not say niggas he taught me, don't be chasing no men around, like, like you, like you, and pick from those group of people. And he also told me, like, anything a man do for you should be extra. And he taught me that lesson because when I was, like, 20, I was, like, living with this, with my boyfriend. He was literally paying for everything, my phone, my, my phone, my lotion my tampons I, I couldn't I didn't have money to every all the money that I had came from him and my dad was like yo what is you doing like you gotta like you can't just be like you can't just be sitting in the house up under him because like me and my boyfriend at the time we would do everything together and now granted I didn't want for nothing we lived in a big old house like I didn't want for nothing, but I also couldn't do nothing for my, I had to play by his rules. I couldn't do nothing on my own. Every time, like, you know, we would get into it, he would never kick me out, but I would, like, pack up my stuff. I didn't even have a suitcase. I would be putting it in, like, trash. It was a mess. And so my dad was, like, one day I, like, got mad, and I, like, stormed out, put my stuff in a black trash bag, called, like, you know what I mean, went over to my daddy's house, and he, like, yo, what is you doing? Like, he like, anything a man do for you is extra. You should never put yourself in a position that, like, if a person decides to leave you, then you, sh like, you SOL, which means shit out of luck. Like, yes, a man should protect you. Yes, a man should, should provide for you. But you also should be able to provide for yourself just in case you don't like the program that they're running. And some of these programs that these men be trying to put you on, don't be right. Cause trust me, I, my baby daddy had a program that I was not with. And I politely excused myself from the program. I didn't have to dumb down my lifestyle. I didn't have to sell my house. I didn't have to, I upgraded my cars because anything he was doing for me and he was fully taking care of me, fully paying for the house. He's paying the mortgage, both my car notes, everything. When he left, I had to re assume all responsibilities and I was okay with it because everything that he was doing for me was extra. I could provide my own lifestyle. Like I've always worked and always been able to provide. I've been thankful and blessed enough to always date somebody who's willing to provide for me. But baby, if you ever got to go, see ya. Wouldn't want to be ya, like my dad said. Don't let the door hit ya where the good Lord split ya. Another lesson he told me is treat everybody how you want to be treated. Meaning like you treat the, the garbage man, the cleaning lady, the CEO, the billionaire, the millionaire, the person on Section 8. You treat everybody the same fairness and kindness that you will want to be shown for you. And knowing, like, you know, like, the same people that you see going up, sometimes you see going down. And you never know who's who. Like, you never know, like, who that person that you're trying to mistreat, be mean to, or nasty to, or be little. You never know who they know. or You never know what position they may hold in the future to, to, rec to recommend you or have to, you know, anything. Or... You just want to be nice to people, even if that person is never in a position to re reciprocate. It's just the right thing to do is just to be nice to people. And so, like, that's why I'm, I've always been a very humble uh, individual. I've never, ever got off on being, like, belittling people or throwing up what I have in people's faces because I know God giveth. And God will take it away. <laughs> so um, that was another lesson that my dad uh, 
taught me. I just wanted to say, like, today is my dad's birthday. I just wanted to kind of, like, I was supposed to do a life update. I'm going to do that. I got to do another life update because this video kind of, like, turned into, like, the background of how I even started my career and how, like, why I am who I am and who I am is because of my father. So July 22nd. It's a very special day. I actually was in a really bad mood today. And I was like very moody, very like, you know, because uh, I really do miss my dad. And, you know, I know you're watching down on me, dad. Come visit me in my dreams. I do miss you. Hope you're proud.